hello guys welcome back to my channel i am lg i am an erasmus mundus scholar studying here in france for my first year i make videos about scholarships most especially the erasmus mundus master degree scholarship and also talk about lifestyle and my travel across europe as an international student so for today's video i am going to be making a breakdown of the video i submitted during the application to dances which is my erasmus mundus program uh, so for dancing you need to submit a video showing your motivations alongside your essay and i want to make a breakdown to show you guys how i was able to do that the reason why i'm making this video is because i've had a lot of requests uh, from people who asking me to share my video with them or asking me how i was able to do mine or stuff like that so i want to break this video up because i feel it'll be more helpful if i show you guys my thought process while i was creating the video and i just break down everything i said why i said those things in my essay so you can adapt some of them uh, some of the tips to your own work and you know come out with like, like a perfect video uh without further ado let's get right into it okay, so before i jump into my video i there are four things i would like to mention which is really important if you're considering on making your video the first thing you want to make sure that the audio of your video is really clear this is the most important thing because it's better to have a clear audio with a not so good video because the uh, audience can still listen to you, the admissions committee can still understand what you're saying. And it's important to speak as clearly as possible because we all have different accents. And for the admissions committee, it might be difficult to hear through your accent if you speak fast, like you've always been speaking. So try as much as possible to speak slowly so they can hear you. The second thing is to avoid repeating your essay, your, your SOP. So you might be tempted to repeat your SOP word for word, just say everything you've written down uh it's a bad idea because the reason why they are giving you an opportunity to have a video and an essay is because they want to see the other side of you they want to see how you're able to speak they want to see how you're able to tell your story so my advice here is instead of repeating your sop try to tell a story from your sop look for a personal experience you know that made you motivated to want to come into that program then turn into a story make it really interesting they try to sell it to the admissions committee the third thing the third thing you need to take note of now is the limit of your video. So you would be given a limit of your video, a uh, social amount of minutes. It could be four, it could be five. You want to stay within that limit and not go outside of it. It's really important. Then the last thing, which is the fourth thing I want to mention here before I get into it. It's uh, you, if you can make visual effects to your video, if you can add visual effects to your video, if you can add subtitles to the video, by all means, go for it. Uh, because um, like i mentioned earlier the audio is key so if it happens that your accent comes in, into the way of the admissions committee understanding what you want to say if you have a subtitle underneath your video you know to make sure they can connect with what you're saying it will be really good so that way they don't have to you don't have to go through the fear of thinking maybe they don't understand you or they can't hear what you're saying so that's important and also visual effects if you can add b-rolls b-rolls are like footage i'm sure an example here uh where you just put clips that can help you convey your message you know much better it will be helpful if you can do these four things you stand a good chance of getting in uh let's get down to it as a kid i was more of the shy type i would prefer to stay indoors all day buried in video games rather than going outside to play i can remember having to wake my younger brothers in the middle of the night so that we could play our favorite carries game. the reason we did most of our games at night is because this was the only time we were sure of a stable power supply I live in a small town in Lagos State, Nigeria, and here, frequent power blackouts were the norm. I can remember how I had to take my parents' phones and gadgets to charge for them at commercial power outlets several miles from our house. This rather unpleasant situation had me thinking of ways to solve our energy poverty problems as at that young age. But now I realize that the world is changing, our cities are expanding, and with this expansion in population comes a high demand for cleaner and more efficient energy. I believe the solution to this is a switch to a more decentralized and digitalized smart energy system. This is why I'm excited to come into the Erasmus Mundus Master Degree Program in Decentralized Smart Energy Systems. Because I believe this program can play a vital role in the push for massive integration of renewable energy sources into our energy systems and help in the ongoing transition towards a low carbon society. So for the introduction, I try to be as creative as possible. I try to tell a story from while I was growing up. I talked about the electricity problem and try to fashion that into my motivation to want to solve this problem. It's important for you to get as creative as possible. Try to tell a story. Hi, I am Olubaila Olamilikon. 
and I hold a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the best university of technology in Nigeria. Here I finished within the top 1% of my class and graduated with a first class degree. During my undergraduate years, I gained practical experience in areas such as advanced thermodynamics, fluid dynamics, heat transfer, and basic electrical engineering. For my final year project, I designed and developed a machine to improve the oil extraction efficiency for Moringa seeds. Also, I have gained professional experience from working in the energy industry in Nigeria. I work with a building services energy firm, and here we specialize in design of smart buildings that conserve operational energy through energy efficient design and operation of the building's HVAC system. I believe that with my academic background and professional experience, I'm a perfect candidate for the Densis program. So in this part, I tried to sell myself as the best candidate to the committee, talked about my work experience, talked about uh, my academic achievements, talked about how I am really sound to, you know, to fit into the program. Everything that just makes you stand out as a candidate, this is the section you might want to put them. It's important for you to talk about it again. Of this program, I hope to enroll for further PhD studies and then subsequently return back to Nigeria to apply my skill set towards research and training in the energy field. Somewhere along the line in my career, I hope to work with the African Union in a capacity that will allow me to offer expert advice towards creating favorable policies similar to that of the European Union Green Deal, which would allow all Africans to have affordable access to sustainable and modern energy. I hope to be given the fantastic opportunity to join the next cohort of scholars for the 2021 intake. I therefore look forward to a favorable consideration. Thank you. For the conclusion of the video, I try to summarize my career goals and tie that into how the program is going to help me achieve them. You can think about your long and your short term goals and think about how your program is going to help you to achieve them. Then you talk about it. You say it in clear terms in the sense that Erasmus programs usually have different um, study tracks at the end of your program, maybe your second semester or your second year. You talk about how that particular study track is going to be beneficial for you because it ties into this and this and these goals that you want to achieve. It's really important. Then you can conclude by thanking the admissions committee and voila, you're done. All right, guys, that was my video. That was the whole package. So to summarize, uh, there are a few things I mentioned at the beginning of the video that you need to take note of. The audio is really important. Secondly, stay within the limit. Thirdly, if you can um, put visual effects you know, to make your video stand out, go ahead, why not? And just make sure you're as clear as possible with everything you're saying. Make sure your accent does not get into the way and you will be fine. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Share the video with your friends and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.